Okay, so now that you have your new camera, let's talk about some of the key features moving forward with filmmaking. All right, so starting out, we have the lens and the lens mount, and right here is the sensor. And the sensor is one of the key elements to understanding your camera. Cameras have all sorts of sensors. You have everything from a medium format all the way down to the sensor on your cell phone and sensors in between, including full frame, APS-C, micro four thirds. Like your retina, each sensor has light sensitive receptors, which measure incoming light and outputs that value into what we know as an image. When it comes to megapixels, we're talking about how many of those receptors can fit on your sensor. So megapixel count and sensor size go hand in hand when it comes to the quality of your image. You'll likely get a cleaner image if you have a larger sensor size and lower megapixel count than a smaller sensor size and a higher megapixel count. With that said though, today's innovation and technology is making it so smaller sensors can take better images. Apart from just image quality though, a larger sensor is going to directly affect how well your camera performs in darker environments. How much of your scene will actually be captured and how blurry the background of your image will be. My first camera, the Canon Rebel T5, had an APS-C sensor with just 18 megapixels. And my second camera, the Lumix GH5, had an even smaller sensor, a micro four thirds, but this time with 20 megapixels. And now I use the Lumix S5, this time with a full frame sensor and 24 megapixels of resolution. Each of those cameras can produce a great looking image. It wasn't as much sensor size and megapixel count of these cameras that made me want to upgrade as much as it was features and ergonomics of newer models. That's the power that comes with understanding sensor size and megapixel, knowing that you don't need the biggest sensor and the highest amount of megapixels to get a good looking image. So if you're wondering if the camera you're using now has a good enough sensor or megapixel count, odds are it does. On the topic of sensors, there are other cool features that go on inside of your camera. This camera that I'm shooting on has something called in-body image stabilization or IBIS, which basically means there's this cage your sensor sits in and as you're running around to get the shot you want, that cage is going to do its best to counter all of your shaky footage. If you pair this technology with a lens that can provide its own stabilization, your footage is going to come out looking incredibly smooth. This is one of the things that Panasonic cameras are best known for and one of the reasons I love shooting on their platform. And one final thing when it comes to sensors. This region of your camera is extremely sensitive, so be sure to take good care of it. Just try not to leave it exposed. When changing lenses, avoid exposing that sensor to dust in the air. Maybe even tilt it down while you're getting everything situated, then put your lens on when you're ready. Food for thought. But enough of sensor sizes and megapixels, let's move on with the camera. Each camera is built differently, so the hardware is going to look and feel differently depending on your model. But in general, all cameras will have these important dials and buttons on them. I'll be using the S5 as an example. And I'll just be briefly running through this. We'll go over the specifics later. So first we have the shutter button. And this is what you press to take your picture. This camera also has a separate button that acts as a shutter specifically for starting and stopping video. Next, we have these discs on top of your camera your mode selectors. And this dial will have some variation depending on the type of camera you shoot with, but in general, it will look pretty similar to this. A lot of these modes really only pertain to taking photographs in my opinion. For video, you'll usually be in one of two modes, S and Q and this film camera with an M to the side. But for now, let's go over the other modes. 
So this first one, IA, is an auto mode. And this is where you leave everything up to your camera. Next up is P, which stands for program. And this means the camera will automatically adjust its shutter speed and aperture for the best exposure. A stands for aperture priority, which means that once your aperture is set and locked in, your camera will take care of everything else. S stands for shutter priority, means the same thing as aperture, but instead of locking in aperture, you lock in shutter speed. M stands for manual. We like manual. This is where we want to be when taking photos. And then there are also some more custom modes on your dial, and that's it. Over here we have another dial. This one is specific to Lumix and is your mode dial. So when you're taking pictures, this is a single picture. This one will be for a burst mode. This one is 6K photo burst mode, time lapse, which is an awesome thing to have built into these cameras and one that I use a lot. And then here on the end, you have a self timer. On top of your viewfinder here, we have what's called a hot shoe mount. This is useful for mounting accessories like microphones on top of your camera, which you can plug into the side right here. On the back here, we have a flip out LCD screen, a playback button, a viewfinder button, which will toggle three different options of how you look at your shot, locked on the LCD screen, locked into the viewfinder, or a combination of both depending on when you bring your eye up to the camera. There's a focus selector right next to the viewfinder with a button in the middle to tap into more specifics with your focusing. Back at the top, there are some buttons near your shutter button. This one is for white balance. Next to it, we have what is called your ISO, and this one deals with your exposure. On the back here, we have an AF button that deals with your autofocus. Let me take a moment and pause to say that with the Lumix S5, all of these buttons are customizable, and I have since customized this AF button to pull focus for me when I'm in manual mode. Okay, back to it. This Q button is a quick menu button and lets you quickly access key settings when shooting. We have a menu button, which accesses a bunch of more features that you'll eventually want to get into. Down here, we have a back button that also doubles as a delete button when looking through your footage. And finally, a display button, which toggles how much information you see on your screen. And then here we have a remote port. I like to use a top handle with a record button on it, and I feed that into this remote port here. And then we have our dual SD card port, which is an awesome feature with this camera. Whew, okay, that was a lot, and you'll feel comfortable with all of these settings and dials and buttons the more you use your camera. And maybe you're thinking to yourself, well, that was a lot of useless information buttons, sensor sizes, megapixel count, but I think there's power in knowing what your camera can do and what buttons do what. As you continue to move along in your experience with filmmaking, you want to dive into the settings of your camera so you can master different techniques and tools to become a better filmmaker. And that's what the next video in this series will be about turning your camera on, setting it to video mode, and learning the fundamentals of recording video.